Okay, so let's review this warpath from Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy, Kingdom. So, as you can see, Warpath is a lovely dark reddy brown colour. I think it might even be called Maroon. Let's have a look at his head. There you go, I think he has a wonderful expression. And uh, interestingly, he almost has his old beard from the G1 days. However, on my warpath, I do have this nice gap in the side, on one side, where I think his head has been assembled poorly. The eyes are black, they have not been painted, however they do seem to suit the figure. Here we can see him from the front, here he is from the side, here he is from the back, a view from the top, and everyone's favourite, a view from underneath. He doesn't actually seem to have any paint apps apart from the one Autobot symbol which you can't see at the moment. However, he has been painted in some areas and some areas are just coloured plastic and you can almost see here that the uh, tones are not quite an exact match but they're not a hundred miles out. Um, this is more of a purpley plastic, whereas the red plastic is more of a red. I think this white area here is also painted. However, I may be wrong. The sculpted detail is very nice. You can see the tank treads are pretty, pretty damn good. The uh, panel lines on him, I think, are also very nice. I like the detail on his face, and I like the details on the turret. It's not massively overly in your face, it's nice and subtle, and I think it serves the figure very well. He has a few hollow areas, mainly on the back of the arms here, you can see, and uh, on the inside of the leg here. However, when you're standing him up, you shouldn't really see much of that. Not a lot of kibble, or backpack, or anything like that. If we turn him around, the back looks very tidy. Um, I suppose you could consider his shield some sort of kibble, however it is supposed to be a shield, so therefore is it really kibble? Looking at the joints and articulation, his head will spin 360, it moves forwards and backwards. The arm will raise and lower at the shoulder, it will move all the way around. He has uh, bicep twists and a 90 degree bicep joint and also the hand will turn at the wrist although he has a very tight wrist. The waist will not move very well because he has this piece here preventing it from turning however it will turn at the waist. If it wasn't there it would probably do a full 360. The dog outside is barking. Uh, in approval or disapproval, I don't know. He uh, can do the splits out to the side, he can kick all the way forward, not quite all the way back because of this piece here. He can bend at the knee and swivel all the way around. And he also has the all-important ankle rocker, although mine is very tight. There we go, did you hear that noise? The sound of breakages perhaps. Also his shield fell off, we'll leave that off. Size comparison wise, here we have our man Cliff Jumper, and you can see he is a couple of inches taller than Cliff Jumper. At the same price, price, price point I believe. Now accessory wise he doesn't come with anything apart from this shield which you can mount on the arm here like so, or for the G1 look on his back, which uh, I think is a bit more interesting. He doesn't come with a gun, which I find a little disappointing. However, his chest gun will still ex extend in robot mode. Therefore, does that count as a weapon? You tell me. Anyway, looking at the shield, 
It literally is just a one piece uh, piece of red plastic. Uh, therefore, there's not really a lot to say about it, but it does have some nice detail on the inside and obviously the peg, which you can peg anywhere. Now let's have a look at him in his alt mode. And here we have Warpath in his rather fetching tank alt mode. Here we can see it from the side. Here we can see it from the rear. Here it is from the other side, the front, the top, and underneath, because I know some of you guys like to look underneath these things. Now this time we can actually see the Autobot symbol there on the front. And uh, intriguingly, I have a gap here, which I don't normally have. So it tells me I've probably misassembled him somewhere. Now again, in tank mode, the sculpted detail is very nice. I especially like the tracks, even if I always do seem to end up with a gap here. There we go, you can push it away, but it does like to just spring out again. Also, sometimes my tracks on this side will never stay fully open. They are supposed to tab in here, which you can see, but they don't like to stay put. Other than that, I think it looks quite good. Again, the detail is quite good. We don't have a lot of hollow bits apart from the siege ports, of which there are many. There's a couple of holes in the tracks there. Again, a siege port in the rear. And if you look in the front, there's a bit hollow in there and also there's some strange gappage going on down there. However, from a distance, it doesn't look too bad. Nicely, the turret will spin when in alt mode, which is, of course, very nice and elevate. And oh, is this traverse? I think there's a correct term for that elevation and traverse, but it goes up and down. However, the barrel hasn't been drilled and it's perhaps something I might want to do later drill a hole in that barrel. He rolls quite well on his four caster wheels. Although, because I have a bent one at the back, it doesn't roll perfectly. I think if this went together a bit better and was a bit more solid, it would actually roll better. However, the caterpillar treads do not move, which I think is a shame, because if I'm going to have a tank, I want tank treads. I don't want fake tank treads. But then again, if it was that, it would be a very expensive uh, Warpath figure indeed. So there you have it. There is Kingdom Warpath. And I'm intrigued to hear what you guys think of this figure.